So it rained yesterday, and that means the burn ban was lifted, at least for a couple of days, and I'm going to take advantage of that. I have a whole lot of wood stoves I've been just waiting to get out in the woods and try. First one I'm going to try is the Keith Titanium Wood Stove. If you're interested in hearing more about this stove, keep watching. So to begin, this will not be a full review of the Keith Titanium Wood Stove. The reason is I just haven't had it long enough. I've had four fires. Today will be fire number five in it. And so I'm still in the testing phase and I really can't give you a good hard use report on it yet. But quickly, how did I come to have this stove? Well, I had been watching this stove on AliExpress and on eBay, and I was ready to pull the trigger on it because I really liked the look of it. I liked the design. I liked, well, the price was good. Not inexpensive, but not expensive either. And I thought at the last minute, I'll reach out to Keith and see if they'd be interested in sponsoring this video. And Keith of USA said, yes, we'll send you one for testing. So this was sent to me by Keith of USA, but I was prepared to buy this on my own and uh, knowing what I know now at least this far I would still spend my own money on this okay so I'm going to show you some close-ups of it and we'll take it down to the fire pit and we'll put a small fire in it just a one small fire today enough to boil some water for coffee because it's just meant to be an introductory re not a review an introductory preview of the stove and I'll come back later when I get a lot more time with it so basically it is a four-sided titanium stove all titanium i'll give you the dimensions in the show notes but it's quickly it's just just a little tiny bit smaller than the firebox stove very close in size to the firebox stove inside it has a burn plate and an ash pan underneath it now it's not a folding design it does lock together with the four four sides locked together and hold the ash pan in place and it has another trivet or pot stand across the top and I'll show you how all that works at another point. One of the things I really liked about this was the fact that it has three interlocking lugs on each side, on each corner I should say, and that means that it should resist warping a lot more. My experience so far is, and I put in some really hot hardwood fires to see if I could get it to warp, and nothing, not even a little tiny bit of warping, so I think those three interlocking bars on the side, or interlocking lugs if you will, are doing a good job. What else did I like about it? I like the fact that it had on either side wide open feed port so it is a top feeding or top from the side as opposed to a bottom from the side feeding stove it has good airflow at the bottom not a lot it doesn't look like a lot right here but when i tested it it was more than enough i was a little concerned that maybe there would not be enough airflow coming from the bottom of the stove not the case at all uh, yeah it is simple design it goes together in four pieces and actually why don't i do that i'll show you that now Here's how the stove comes from China, and it's a nice little nylon pouch with a zipper on the side and the Keith logo sewn on the end of it. I do have a few stats written on a piece of tape on it, and I'll give you those now. Uh, they are in metric because that's my primary uh, measurement, but I will put them in English on the screen and in the show notes as well. So it does come in at 319 grams. It stands 16 centimeters high when it's assembled. It's 11.2 centimeters wide, and it is a square shape, and it has a burn chamber depth of 13 centimeters. As I said, it's very close to the firebox inside. And I think at some point I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two stoves. So when you get this inside, it becomes my extra pot stand, burn plate, ash pan, and the four sides. All right, so it's not that it's hard to put together. It's just that it can be a bit tricky. I think it's more of a learning curve than anything else. But there are four plates. Two are the same, the other two are different. One I consider the front or the back. I guess I consider it the back the way I put it together. And it's the one that has the Keith symbol on it. I'll take the two identical side plates and hook them in, those three notches. And then I find it easy if I lay it down on the ground to assemble the rest of it. And the rest of it is to put in the, the uh, burn plate and the ash pan. And the burn plate and the ash pan both have notches on the three sides, not on the last side. And you'll see why. And they just mate into the slots on the back plate and the side plates. And this is where you got to have almost three hands. It's not that bad, but uh, like I said, a little bit of a learning curve. And there, I'm holding it together. I'll put it upright or in standing position. 
And the last piece goes on by interlocking the three sets of locks. Little, this is just a little bit of a lining up thing. And it takes a second or two to get everything lined up. It is much easier if you do it on a level surface. There, that's all put together. Now, will it withstand falling from a height in an assembled thing? I, I don't think so. It's, it's solid, but it, uh, you know, it won't come apart in use, but it's uh, still not locked together. It's not hinged like a firebox stove is. And the last piece is this additional pot stand. Now, if you've got a pot big enough to, to cover that whole uh, top of that, that, the stove, then you won't need this. But if you want this, and, and I like using it anyway, it goes in very easily. I just put it in at an angle, and there are notches, and I'll bring you up close to that in a second, that lock it into place. So you can see where there's little notches. Let me take it out so you can see it going in. Notches in both the, the side walls and in the pot stand. And it just locks into place like that. That's all there is to it. Now, the stove is ready to use. So what I'll do is I'll set it up in the fire pit. And we'll get a little fire going in it. And I'll put some water on for coffee. Okay, so I've set the stove up in the fire pit right here. Uh, just as much for wind protection as anything else. What I've done is I put a little bit of birch bark in the bottom, uh, some broken twigs off of some spruce trees here, a little piece of fat wood that uh, I found locally. And just off to the side here, I have some cuts of birch oak things that I've just cut out down around the area. So once I get the fire started, I'll, uh, I'll add some of the hardwood to it. Nothing very bushcrafty today. I'm going to use a Bic lighter, a little piece of birch bark as a tinder piece to pass it over. And get that down inside. Do you know, I suppose I could have just as easily uh, did a top-down burn, loaded it, everything's vertically stacked, put a little bit of uh, kindling on top of that, and done a top-down burn. And I will, and I likely will do that for the full review, because uh, I like using stoves like that. I could have also just started and started adding things in for the bottom. This is, I guess, somewhere in between, as you'll see. Now, what you can't see right now is the two wide open ports on the sides that are, I, I consider the two feed ports because that's where I'm going to be feeding in. I could right now feed in from the top, but in a few minutes I'll just be feeding in from the side. You can see already how quickly this thing is drafting. It, uh, you know, I didn't expect this. I honestly did not expect it to, to draft that well because I felt that there was not enough airflow around the bottom. Plenty of exhaust area, but uh, maybe not across the bottom. But well, you can see for yourself how well that is drafting and drawing air and creating a lot of flame. Now, part of the test will be what happens when you put a pot on. Will it dampen it down? We'll show you that in a second. While this is catching, and I'm ready to throw in a few pieces of hardwood here. And you can see how easy they are to feed in from the sides. Uh, this is, as far as I can tell, an original design from Keith. And Keith is, and I'm sure most of you are aware, in my mind at least, the premier Chinese outdoor company in terms of quality materials and original designs. Many of you might be familiar with the heavy cover canteen, titanium canteen and uh, cup set. And that is made by Keith from China. And uh, this, as far as I know, is an original design, which is exciting. It wasn't copied or, or blatantly you know, taken off somebody else. So. We have a fire going. Didn't take long to establish that. In fact, it's intense enough. I think I'll put on a glove to get my pot on. Now, I'm just using my 12 centimeter Zebra Billy can because it's just the pot I use most often when I go out in the woods. And you can see it fits on there well, but there's room for a lot more, a lot, lot larger pot on top of this. And it seems to be plenty stable and able to take the weight as well. Now, what else did I notice right away? No dampening of the flames. There is plenty of exhaust area for flame and smoke to come up through around the sides, as you can see. In fact, so much so that I think uh, a much larger pot might have been more efficient than this small pot that I'm using on here. Okay, I think for the purposes of an initial, initial overview, we have uh, seen enough. And what I'll do is I'll close up in a few minutes with just a couple of comments, and we'll talk about the long-term review. So what are my initial thoughts on the Keith Titanium Wood Stove? 
Well, so far it's lived up to the expectations I had of it when I first saw this on AliExpress. Um, it's, it's a good size stove. It's actually a little bigger than what I think the picture led me to believe. Now, I guess I could have taken the measurements and figured that out. But it's a good size stove, especially at the weight, made of titanium. Again, no warping after this fire. I, I burned it rather hot, no warping at all. Uh, are there any downsides to this? Well, a couple. One is it's a little finicky going together. It's not unlike a lot of the piecemeal stoves or puzzle stoves, you might call them, where you do have to have a, a little bit of patience and a little bit of, uh, you know, it's a bit of a learning curve, learning how to get them together quickly, efficiently, without having them falling apart. Once it's together, it's fine. It holds together well. It, there is no risk of it coming apart while, while it's in use. What else would I like to see different about this? Well, I won't get too far into it, but use with an alcohol stove. There's a bit of a handicap that this has as far as using an alcohol stove, but I won't say too much about that now. I'm going to leave that for the long-term review because I really want to put this stove through its paces because uh, titanium, one of the concerns is, in my experience with a lot of other small titanium stoves is, they do warp over time. Two things going for this is the titanium in this is thicker than a lot of stoves. I, I measured it against my Firebox titanium stove and it's the same weight thickness of titanium that it has. So that says something. And I also think that the three notches on each corner, the locking notches, are doing a good job of holding it together. Efficiency wise? exceeds my expectations. But I think that's enough for now. What I'll do is I'll come back in as soon as I can, as far as the burn season goes, and we'll give you a long-term review. But until then, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.